I'm, I'm really excited about being here. It's my first time in Europe. Uh, all the talks have been great so far. I've been running around between both the rooms. Uh, but I'm here for now. Uh, I hope you're excited about learning some things about serverless observability. Let me start by telling you who I am. I'm Bridwan Sharif. I work on observability tools and solutions uh, for different GCP environments. Most of my work has been focused on agents like OpenTelemetry and Prometheus and our own agents called the Ops Agent but, and getting them to run on VMs. But more recently, I've been working on leveraging OpenTelemetry and Prometheus uh, on serverless environments like Cloud Run. I'm here today for like two main reasons. Uh, the first is I always wanted to visit Europe, and this way Google pays for it. Uh, and the second is because for the past six months, I've been working on making Google's serverless offering called Cloud Run uh, more observable. And there were lots of lessons along the way, and I think it makes for a good talk, I think. Uh, and a lot of our lessons are very applicable to the open source world, and we just wanted to make sure we build these solutions in OSS as opposed to in private. This is a quick agenda of what we'll cover. We only have like 25 minutes, so we'll stick to some of the basics. But, and if you feel like some of these topics are rushed, find me after. They probably are rushed. But yeah, let's just get started. Oh, actually, let me give, tell, tell you what we're talking about. We'll, we'll cover serverless briefly. We'll talk about some of the problems with serverless observability. We'll then cover some changes we actually made to Cloud Run itself to accommodate observability. And then we'll talk about its implications on different kinds of telemetry systems, like push-based ones, like open telemetry collector, pull-based ones, like Prometheus. And then we talk about how we productionize and configure these agents in the wild. So let's get started. What, why, and when do we use serverless? Now, the premise of serverless is pretty simple. It gives you the promise of having users only pay for what they consume. Uh, it scales quickly and transparently as workloads demands change. It's, it's a way of providing the infrastructure as a service on a pay-per-use basis. Uh, typically, you will have to write like code or some configuration, and that's it. You don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure anymore. And, and, that's, and, and Google serverless offering called Cloud Run offers serverless for containerized workloads. If you have containers, you, will, you can scale them pretty seamlessly with Cloud Run. It implements the Knative serving API. And like Knative, it attempts to scale to zero. What that means is if your service sees no traffic, you pay for no CPU or memory costs. Why you would ser use serverless? Well, the main reason is cost. It's generally very cost effective. You often pay a fraction of what you would pay otherwise because you don't pay for unused space or idle CPU. Uh, developers that want to use serverless will not have to worry about how to scale up their code, and it'll all scale on demand. Uh, it also gives you like, a quick time to market, because you don't have to worry about like, complicated rollout processes and procedures. You can just write code, and the serverless vendor usually takes care of the rest. I really like this illustration that shows some of the cost benefit of serverless. The things you see in dark blue there are your cost savings for because you don't pay for unused space or idle CPUs. Serverless is not a silver bullet, though. You don't get to use it for every problem you encounter. Uh, for Cloud Run specifically and other containerized serverless workloads, there are very specific condi conditions you need to satisfy for you to use it. For Cloud Run, you, it has to be requests driven, usually HTTP or gRPC. It does not require a local file system. Network file systems or firmware file systems. Network databases are fine, though. Uh, your container should be, should be able to handle multiple instances of the app running simultaneously and doesn't have like very strict, uh, very high CPU or memory usage per instance. Uh, and the most important one is for Cloud Run specifically, it has to be containerized. They have, there are containers that we're scaling. There exists a perception that like if you're running containerized workloads, you have to choose between like Cloud Run or Kubernetes or some equivalent, but I don't think that's really true. They can and should be used together. I like this sketch because it kind of gives you a simple illustration of when to use what resource, uh, what runtime. If you want committed resources, use VMs or Kubernetes. If you want pay-as-you-go, use one of the serverless offerings. If you're using containers, evaluate Kubernetes or Cloud Run. Uh, yeah, and that's what serverless is. Now let's talk about why 
observability is tricky when you're dealing with serverless. So on the spectrum there from like traditional on-premise instances from all the way to like software as a service and fun serverless things, you trade off what you manage with what your serverless vendor manages for you, or your cloud vendor manages for you. On one end, you manage everything from like the hardware to the operating system. And on the other end, you only manage like maybe the configuration and maybe some application code. Oh. But what does that mean for observability? If your vendor abstracts away the infrastructure that you want to observe, what does observability mean in this environment? Well, sometimes it feels like you're looking at a brick wall. Oh. You might be flying blind without access to custom telemetry that you really want or you're used to in the other runtimes. Oh. And sometimes when you want to add this telemetry, it feels like you're onboarding onto the, serve, the cloud vendor specific tech stack now. Oh. I don't mean to say there is no observability on serverless right now. There certainly is. Like if you have any logs that go to standard out or standard error, they usually go to like cloud logging or one of the equivalents backends. You also have like a bunch of built-in metrics for serverless. Like this is an example from from our backend, uh, you get request counts, CPU utilization, you get like counts of running jobs, and a bunch of like built-in metrics that are quite useful. But say you have your custom application, your container is running some exporter, you're running, you want some application custom code that you've instrumented yourself, some things about your business logic that you have telemetry for, what then? Then you're actually out of luck. You might, you might, you might need to actually get your hands dirty and add a considerable amount of complexity to your infrastructure. And that kind of sucks from like Google's perspective. We would much rather have that you build an image, you instrument it once with your favorite instrumentation, whether it be Prometheus, OpenTelemetry, or something else, and you take this container and you run it across any of these runtimes, uh, and then in instrument and visualize them the same way. This would be like what ideally we would want, except that serverless branch there is not really true. It's not as, as simple uh, because of a few problems. And let's cover them now. Now, serverless compute is designed to reduce runtime of services. This means that instances in serverless might actually live at an extreme for exactly one request. They might, only, they might pop up server requests, and then the instance might terminate. And so all telemetry produced by the serverless instance will need to export and flush all their telemetry very efficiently and quickly. And uh, a lot of the instrumentation libraries that exist right now don't actually have that functionality. They don't flush telemetry on shutdown. That doesn't happen with like Prometheus and Open Census, for example. Open Telemetry does support this, but we don't want to require everyone just to use that for instrumentation here. Uh, and oftentimes what you build for serverless will be built in a way that's not very portable. You're often writing containers that are built specifically for serverless to get around this. Admittedly, the second problem is more of a Google problem. Uh, our time series database, Monarch, doesn't allow cumulative metrics to be stored without start times. What that really means for us is we actually need two points to report one cumulative, the first cumulative point to our time series database because we cache the first one and normalize every subsequent point with it. In, in serverless, this is tricky because we might not live long enough to actually have two successful scrapes because of the previous problem where instances die very quickly. The third problem is quite general, though. A lot of the Prometheus-based scraping, Prometheus-based and pull-based uh, metrics they often require that metrics are pulled and not pushed from the instance itself. And this is a problem. Prometheus is like pretty opinionated, as, as probably all of you know here. Uh, it assumes that you have like long-running instances that live long enough to be scraped and discovered. They're OK with missing scrapes, and they communicate with like local hosts and ports. A lot of these assumptions don't actually hold with serverless vendors. Uh, and even if it did, an external Prometheus entity doing the scrapes doesn't know the life cycle of these instances themselves. And so what you'll have is you'll, and we'll see an example shortly, you'll have the Prometheus scraping fail oftentimes. Uh, there are solutions around this. There are like push gateways and aggregation gateways. Actually, in, in KubeCon, like two years ago in Europe, there were two talks about how you can 
play around with Prometheus for the serverless world using aggregation gateways. Uh, there are talks from like Colin Das from Cloudflare and fleeting metrics by like Bartek and Saswata. Interestingly, they're all here at this KubeCon, so hunt them down too. Uh, but this is what that looks like. In Prometheus, when you have like a long running instance and you have like interval based scraping, you'll get successful scrapes and you'll get like a lot of aggregated data that you can pull away. But when you take this long running instance and you split it up and have a bunch of short running instances, you might have scrapes that miss entirely. And even scrapes that do actually scrape partial data, you'll only get partial results because that instance might never be scraped again to get the rest of the aggregation or the rest of the results. And that's a problem. There's also the last problem. It's a, it's a minor one. In the other runtimes, like Kubernetes, you might have nice operators to configure your agents. Uh, but on Cloud Run and on a lot of serverless vendors, we don't have that. So we need to be more creative on how we configure these agents and deploy them. And so this is what that looks like. The nice and portable story you wanted, we don't really have. Instead, we have this very hand wavy system of like how we should instrument and deploy our observability solutions. And we were determined, okay, we were going to address this now. How, how should we do it? Well, we actually cheated. Uh, we decided that this problem we should actually partially solve in the serverless, like Cloud Run service itself. Not so it could run our bespoke agents, but also so it could run Otel and Prometheus. So let, let's cover that now. What changes did we need to make to Cloud Run to accommodate observability? Well, the first one is we introduced sidecars. Now, sidecars allow you to start independent containers that run alongside the main container that, that's serving web requests. The main use case for this is to support running collection agents, like Otel might run in a sidecar. And they can communicate freely with the agents, with the applications. All containers will share the same network namespace, so they can communicate with local ho host and port. They also can share files because they have shared volumes that are mounted. Uh, to be fair, like observability is not the only use case for sidecars, so we, we didn't have like a very hard time convincing people to add this, uh, because they can also be used for like nginx in front of your application container. You could have like authentication and authorization filters. You could have connection proxies. Sidecars are generally quite useful. We didn't need just sidecars, though. We also needed one more bit, which is we needed the ability to order the life cycles of these containers. And so what that means is we can define a dependency between the containers. In this case, container A is a dependency of container B. And what that will mean is container A will start up before container B starts up, and container B shuts down before container A shuts down. And let, let's motivate why this is important with a couple of examples. Say you have a push-based approach to your telemetry with like the open telemetry collector. Your application starts up. It might want to flush some metrics. When it flushes that telemetry, it will expect that the OTL collector is up and ready to respond to those flushes. So the OTL collector actually needs to exist before your sidecar is alive. The same thing on shutdown. On shutdown, your application might flush telemetry once again. And when it does that, the OTL collector needs to still be alive. And so the OTL collector needs to terminate after. And so this dependency relationship is quite important to make sure we don't miss like, telemetry. For the pull-based approach, now say you have Prometheus as a sidecar. Uh, you actually need the opposite. You actually, because the flow of telemetry is initiated by the sidecar itself, the Prometheus sidecar might actually want to pull when it starts up, in which case it will expect the application to already be alive. And the same thing on shutdown. On shutdown, when Cloud Run says, OK, there's no more requests. We're shutting down the instance. We actually need to shut down the sidecar first so it can do a final scrape of the application before the application itself terminates. And so this is what like, an instance would look like with no instrumentation. Once you add these sidecars, they will look like this, where we talked about the dependency, dependency before. And so every time the instance pops up, the sidecars pop up with it for the purpose of observability. And when they shut down, they shut down together. And that's it. That's all we needed to do to Cloud Run. Now let's look at what this meant for OTLP, push based ingest, and then we'll talk about Prometheus after. Turns out nothing. Uh, that's all we actually need. And OTLP push based metrics now work fine. All you need to do is make sure when you add the 
collector as a sidecar, you specify the dependency ordering, and you'll have your metrics flowing with no lossy telemetry. That's quite nice, actually. Um, pull based metrics are not as nice. Pull based metrics were a little tricky and not as simple, and we actually needed to make a few changes to the Prometheus libraries and some OTEL components to get this to work. The main thing we needed to add was the ability to scrape on shutdown. This is that when the Prometheus collector is shutting down, it performs a final scrape. And we had to add that to the libraries. And we need to make sure that these scrapes are guaranteed, even if the sidecar just booted up. Uh, the last point there is a GCP specific thing. We needed to make sure that these final scrapes actually do complete within 10 seconds. Because, because of the de dependency ordering, we need to make sure that after 10 seconds, the application gets a chance to gracefully shut down. Otherwise, everything is going to be killed non gracefully. This is what that looks like. You'll have your regular interval based Prometheus scraping, and then you have this final scrape at the end to make sure you collect all data and you're not missing any aggregation. It, this is what it looks like when you, your instance is only alive for, let's say, 10 seconds. Uh, we'll actually scrape optimistically on startup, like with some offset, and then again, we will scrape on shutdown. And like we talked about before, there is the extreme case where your instance only lives for exactly one request in which case your instance pops up and dies immediately after it serves the request, we will still scrape once on shutdown. I alluded to this before. We, like, our issue with GCP was we, we weren't able to deal with just a single scrape for cumulative metrics. So we needed to make a change to like, OTLP, uh, Open Telemetry's Prometheus receiver to allow us to like, do some hacky things. One thing is we actually synthesize a start time metric so we will look for the process start time metric that a lot of Prometheus SDKs will export. And if we don't find that, we'll use the collector start time and synthesize that instead. There is a slight catch that's like very rare and definitely an anti-pattern, where if your serverless mo application is like using, ex using an exporter that's emitting a metric about something that lives outside, you might see a high rate. But again, this is rare, and we were OK making this trade-off. And that's it. Now we should have pull base and push base metrics working correctly. The only last bit we need to figure out is how we deploy and configure these collectors in the world. Well, we, this, this is admittedly a little hacky, but we use Secret Manager. Secret Manager is like our secret store. Uh, there are a bunch of equivalents. But what we do essentially is we store the configs of these collectors as secrets. And these secrets are nice because you have like gran granular access controls for who can edit and view them. And uh, we then mount these secrets onto the collectors so that the sidecars can access them. This is quite nice because any update made to the secret will automatically, automatically uh, find itself in the local file system for these collectors because they're mounted. And then we have the supervisor process of the collector that pulls for updates to this file and reloads the collector so it makes sure it's, it's running the latest configs. This is what that looks like. You have the secret manager and how you store the secret. It's mounted as a volume. And then you have your Cloud Run uh, sidecars. Look, keep, it'll keep reading the file until it sees a new config, and at which point it will reload the collector. If you want to configure it, all you need to do is, again, define the dependency ordering that we talked about before making sure that the application's uh, dependency off the collector. And then you define the secret, mount it as a volume, and use that OTEL collector that uses the Prometheus receiver. And that's it. You don't have to make any changes to your instrumentation. This is an application that we have that runs, it's the same image that runs on a VM, on GKE, and on Cloud Run. And using this, you have the same metrics come flowing in the same way from all, all three runtimes. And that's kind of where we are now. We, we had like built-in telemetry support. We then made some changes to Cloud Run to accommodate observability. Over the next few months, what we're trying to do is making sure the changes we had to make to open telemetry and Prometheus are upstreamed so that they're useful to not just our collectors, but, but just these projects in the wild. And then looking ahead, there are a bunch of problems we still have to solve with, with Cloud Run and serverless. Um, a few of them are like resource overhead. 
because the sidecar approach is nice, but customers directly pay for them, pay for the CPU and memory they use. So us keeping control of like how much memory they use is, is vitally important. And there have already been a few talks about instrumentation overhead and, and maybe collector overhead is something we can look into. Uh, there are other issues like CPU throttling. This is quite tricky. This one is annoying and we have not figured it out yet, but <laughs> essentially if you have a serverless service that doesn't ha have high enough QPS that it's continuously alive, but doesn't have low enough that it shuts down, you might be in a state where Cloud Run will give you an instance, but will give you no CPU. In, in which case, it will, uh, your scrapes will fail and your, th your flushes will fail, and you get a bunch of errors and limited observability. There are also other approaches we're considering. Those are like more vendor specific though, like having sidecar less monitoring, where like the control plane itself will do scraping, but that's not as interesting because it's like completely closed source. Uh, yeah, but that's what, it, what that's what I have for you. I hope I hope this was useful. Uh, I'm also curious about what people will use these changes we made to Cloud Run for. Uh, yeah, but that's about it. I'll open it to questions. Thank you for listening to me ramble.